G'day and welcome to another one of my videos. Today we're going to have a look at how we can link bivariate data um, with using Microsoft Excel spreadsheets and to create a scatter plot and a line of best fit. So when you open up Microsoft Excel, you should see something that looks fairly similar to this, depending on how much work you've been doing um, and what version of Microsoft Excel you have. So what we'll do is we'll open up a blank workbook um, and we should see something that looks fairly similar to this. Okay, so what I've asked my students to do when we've been doing this exercise recently is to go to cell D1 and click in that, and then to actually type their name in there. So I'm just going to type in student name. And what I've also told my students is that you'll notice that it goes across two cells there and that looks a bit um, untidy. So what I'll do is I'll just click out of that and then click back into D1 and E1, highlight them. And then if we go up here, we can click on merge and center and it combines those two cells for their student name. What I can also do is I can bold and underline that also by clicking on the bold and underline parts there. So now what I've just added up here is uh, a little bit of a heading about what our data is going to be about. So we're going to compare weights to pulse rates. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll click on that particular cell and I might change the size of that. We can do our font size and change it to whatever we do. If I change it to 14, then I'll have to redo my cell sizes or merge again. So what we'll do now is over in um, cell A5, we'll start to type in um, our information. So we're going to compare um, our weights and we'll call that our X value. And then we're also going to do our pulse rate. And we're going to call that our Y value. Now what you'll notice is they come outside of our particular cells there. This time I'm not going to merge and center. So what I'm going to do is I'll come up to above where the A is and you'll see a black down arrow. If I click on that, that highlights the, all of column A. And I'm going to change the width of it so it all fits in there. So I just come across a bit. So now my weights X and my pulse rate Y. Um, fit into our A5 and A6 cells respectively. Now it's time to enter in our data, so our weights. In this case, we've got 15 um, weights that we're going to enter in. So we click in cell B5, and our first weight is 58. And if I press the CAD button, it'll automatically come across. The um, next one is 51. Press tab. The next one, 43 kilos. And this time I'm going to use the right arrow. It does the same thing. So either the left, uh, so press the tab button or the right arrow, we'll move it across. So 55, 62, and I'll fill the rest in in a moment. And if I press enter, it comes down, and then we can just click into the next cell down there and start to enter in pulse rates. So 60, etc. So I've entered in all of that data there. Um, and what we can now do is if we, come and start to highlight all of that particular data, so all of these cells. Then what we can do is we can center them. So if we come up here, we can center all of that data if we wish to. Um, we can bold it. What I'm actually going to do is come to this particular drop-down box here, and we are going to draw borders around all of them. Uh, so that way if I click out of it, it looks like a proper table there of what our particular weights versus pulse rates. And before we continue, we just need to double check that um, they correspond to what they're meant to be. So 58 um, kilograms there has a pulse rate of 60 beats per minute. So make sure that we've entered in our data correctly before we proceed. So now that we've got our data entered in, we've got our 15 um, scores there, we're now going to select these 15 scores without the headings this time. And what we're now going to do is create a graph. So we're going to come up to insert. And then if we come over here, we see all these charts. And remember, we've got bivariate data. So we're going to choose a scatter plot there. 
and we just want these type. Click on that, and we then get our data plotted onto our scatter plot. Now you might find that um, our particular chart is over to the left or to the right a little bit, so we can bring it back over and align it by clicking on the border of it and dragging it over to where we want to position it. So, and when I clicked on that, you would have noticed that there's a little plus symbol over here. So what that does is allows us to do some um, changing of the chart here. So if we click on that, what we can actually do is put some titles on the axis. And obviously we're not going to leave them as axis title. So if we go and actually click on this one for the horizontal axis, remember that's our X axis. If we click in there and get rid of what's there and type in our weights, and we'll put that in kilograms. So there's our weights in kilograms. And then we can just come over and click on this one. And again, we delete what's there. And this was our pulse rates in beats per minute. Okay. So we've just added our titles there. But what you do notice is there is a lot of wasted space here within our chart. So we're going to come back and click on our chart, get this plus sign back up. And it's going to give us a bit of um, options there about um, we can put with our grid lines are already in and we can put our trend line in. All right, so what we're going to do is we'll put our trend line in already. And that's our line of best fit there. So if we click on that, and let's put our trend line in for that particular data. So as I said before, there's a lot of wasted space here. So what we're going to do is we'll click on this plus button here. And if we go to axes, there's actually an arrow that comes up here. Um, what we can do is click on that, and that gives us some things about our horizontal and vertical. But if we select more options, then we have this um, taskbar over here on the side that appears and what we actually want to do is we'll look at changing our axis so we've got our x-axis here it's already highlighted if it wasn't then what I can actually do is click on that as well and it brings up that um, formatting the axis as well so if we have a look our smallest um, horizontal data is um, just greater than 40 so we can actually start at 40, and that's what we'll do up here. So we'll change our minimum. So click in there, and we'll change that to 40, and press Enter. And you'll notice that our scale along the horizontal axis changes, stretching the data out a bit more, going from 40, and it's automatically adjusted this last one to 85. So if we go and click on the vertical data, we can do the same thing. Our lowest one is about just over 50, so we can then change our minimum to 50. Press Enter, and it'll automatically adjust that. So now that we've got that there, what we're going to do is actually try and put our equation of the trend line onto our graph. So if we click on our line there, if it doesn't work the first time, click again. You can just see that the ends are highlighted there. Um, and we click on our plus, we can go to trend line, and then what we want to do is have a look at our more options. Now sometimes this will appear when you've clicked on it automatically. You know we've got a linear trend line that we're doing. There are other, other options, but we're doing a line of best fit, a straight line of best fit. And if we have a look down here, we can see display equation on chart. Now, sometimes if you don't see this straight away, you might need to choose this option, okay, because this one might be highlighted. So you might need to choose that option, come down here, and it will display the particular equation of that trend line on the chart. Again, if it's not in the correct position, we can click on that, come up to getting the crosses there, and drag it over to where we want that particular line. Okay. Um, what we haven't done so far is we haven't changed the title of this particular chart. 
So we can come up here and also change that. And this was weights uh, versus pulse rate. And we can actually say of oh, 15 people. So we're just about done. Um, what we might need to do sometimes is I might need to try and make a prediction from my graph. So um, using that trend line, if I wanted to know what the pulse rate of a person who weighs 60 kilograms was, I can come along to 60, read up to my line there and go across and I'd probably get an answer of approximately about 64 beats per minute. Or I can substitute that 60 in for the X value there and work that out um, using that particular equation. But sometimes we might want to read off our graph for someone that might be 85 or 90 kilos. But our line, our trend line there, only goes to the last data value there. So what we're going to do is if we then come back onto our information for format trend line. And what we're going to do is we're going to go forward to 90. So I'm 80 at the moment. I'm going to go forward to 90. So that means I've got to go forward 10. So we change that to a 10. And it automatically adjusts both our horizontal and vertical axis if need be. And you can see that our trend line has been extended 10 units. So that now I could then use my graph to estimate the pulse rate of someone who weighs 90 kilograms. And if I go across, I'm getting an answer about 84 beats per minute, 83, 84 beats per minute. But if I wanted to be more accurate, I could substitute in my 90 into my equation there. And that would give me, um, using our trend line, a possible more accurate answer. And I could do a similar thing by going backwards. I could go backwards 10 as well. Press enter and it will extend it there. And what I may need to do, as you can see that it's come off my particular chart, I would then need to go and change my data here. Um, and so if we come to our other options, we can go to our axis and we can change our minimum and maximum value there. So if I need to change this to 30, so that it fits in, and I can also change my vertical axis as well by doing the same thing. So we could go down to 40. And there we go, we've just extended our lines and the process of extending our lines is called extrapolation because we're doing some extra bits there to extend our lines to get that. So I hope you have found this video useful and it helps you with your tasks for those in my classes and Mrs. Taylor's class in um, setting up their assignment. So make sure you follow these steps and you should be able to do this work fairly simply and easily now.